I don't know about you, but I spent a silly amount of time taking things like the current date and then trying to figure out what day of the week it falls on. So perhaps I'd have some kind of array with like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then try to figure out based off of that what day it's on. And none of that needs to happen. There's actually something that lives directly on date objects called the two locale date string. You can see here that this actually just built into JavaScript. And that means if I want to figure out what day of the week it is, I can console.log here the day of the week and just pass it my now, and it tells me it's Monday. I don't have to figure all this out myself. I don't have to write some complicated thing. It's already baked directly into the browser. And it can do way more than that. For instance, I can pass it a date style and then a calendar I want it to display in and a special locale. I want it to be shown in at all times, no matter where you're finding this. And then I can pass it the full date. And now what it will tell me is in Korean, the full date with a Persian calendar. All right, all kinds of stuff you can do here. And it took, takes no work at all. This is built directly into the browser. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. On the left here, I've got a JavaScript file and over on the right, I've just got the docs for two locale date string. Now we're gonna start with just a few dates. So let's say something like now equals new date. And if I pass it just like that, that should give us a date. Let's also say something like, uh, how about new years? Something like that. So we'll say new date and here I'll pass it one, one, 22. All right, so that's two different dates to work with. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start working with this. And there's two things you can pass into it. But before I get into that, note first of all that it basically is just an implementation of an API that already exists, and it's just attaching that to this date object. So that's important because it, it means that we can kind of customize it, and there's actually some performance gains we can get if we want to write this ourselves rather than using the method here. So as I scroll down here, the two things you can pass in are locales or options, and you can pass in one and or the other, whichever one you prefer. So I'll come down this way and let's talk about locales first. So first of all, I'm gonna say console.log and let's just say now. And uh, now I'm using a, an extension called Quokka here that will print things out for me. So you can see it directly in the JavaScript file, which will make it a little bit easier to show it to you. So I'm gonna say to uh, locale date string. And then again, we can pass it two things. Let's start with nothing and just see what it prints. So if I do that, you can see all the way over here, it's gonna print the date just like this, and it's the seventh where I'm at, which is the night before you're seeing this. So you can see here, I've got it pulled up. Now I can, if I want to, switch that around. For instance, if I'm in Great Britain, I might do it more like this, and then that prints it out the other way, day, then month, and then year. I'll leave it to you which one is best, but the point is that you can basically decide how it's displayed. Now usually you'll actually leave this alone, and that way it displays in whatever the client sees normally. So if they're in the US, they would expect it to be month, day, year, and if they're somewhere else, they might expect it the other way around. So usually you'd leave that alone and let the browser actually determine that for the end user. However, you can specify that if you want, and you can even do other things like, I think Korean is something like that. Yeah, so as you can see how that spells it out a little bit differently. They've got periods after each, and they start with a year. Now let's go ahead and just change this back to ENUS to start with, and that should work just fine. Now the second thing you can pass in is an object, and you can see that right here. Now if I wanna very quickly see what's available to me, I can scroll down here, and what they're gonna do is basically point me over to the internationalization API, because again, it's just corresponding to its own options because it's just wrapping it. So the constructor that's found here is the same options that we have. So if I click here, it'll actually bring me to those docs. And you can see I've got a whole list of them. And if I wanna see it quickly here in my editor, I can just hit control and spacebar, and I get all of these that show up for me. This is just showing you what's available with this method. So a bunch of these here. First of all, let me just show you kind of some more macro ones that will determine several things for you. And the first one here is date style. So if I add date style here, and again, this is just uh, an object. So I can just say full. And what you'll see is I'll get the full date written out just like that. I can also say long, or I can say short, or I can say medium. I think short is the default. Yeah, there you go. So there we go. So that's the date style. Now time style works the same way. Notice that because these are more macro ones, you can't specify kind of smaller details, and I'll show you why in a second, because if you just specify this, it will only return the weekday. And that might be useful, for instance, if you wanna say what day a certain event shows on, you can just say Monday. You don't have to write your own function for it. Just use the API that's found in the browser. All right, so those two are kind of macro ones. You can see then I've got other ones that just kind of add additional elements onto whatever the date is. So for instance, I might wanna specify a different calendar than a my locale would be used to. So I could say something like calendar, and then I could type in like Persian or something. 
And this would actually tie it to the Persian calendar. I could do the same thing for Chinese, like that. You can see how it's giving me the Chinese, but still it's giving it to me in English because that's my locale. If I were to change this around, so if I go back to Korean like this, you can see now I get the Chinese calendar in Korean. I'm assuming that's what that is. Or I could say uh, German, which I think is something like that, maybe. All right, and you can see how I can just switch this around very easily. So in this case, maybe let's go with Hebrew, and that way I get a Hebrew calendar. And uh, you can see that I'm getting it in German, though, even though I'm telling the calendar to be a little bit different. Again, usually, you know, unless you have a very specific use case, you're going to just use whatever the locale's calendar is. So you just remove it like that, and it should show it as you'd expect. Now, while there are a ton in here that could be useful to you, I'm going to skip through a lot of these because I don't think you're going to use them just like the calendar. I just wanted to show you how that works. You can come in here and actually specify a time zone. If you don't, it just uses the, the client's default. So wherever they're at in the world, it will basically adjust for them, which is usually what you want. But you could come in here instead, and let's say I said time zone, and I wanted it to, instead of being in my current locale, I wanted it to be UTC time. Well, that actually puts it into tomorrow, so it shows tomorrow's date. Another thing to note here is if you want it to be 12 or 24 hour time, depending where you're at, your locale will actually set that as the default. However, you can override that if you want with this hour 12. Let me scroll back down this way and I wanna now show you a couple other things that are important. I'll skip past some of these, but like here's the weekday one. So let's say I just wanna return what day is today. Well, I could just pass it weekday and then pass it something like long. Oops, long like that in strings. You can see here that today is Monday. Or I can shorten that like that and just say M-O-N. Or narrow, I think, just gives me maybe the day. Yeah, just like T or M in this case. Now, I don't know why you'd want this, but for instance, you might want to set the era. So like if you're writing some kind of important history and you want to know this is AD on Monday, uh, that would be useful to, to pretty much everybody uh, like that. But you can see how that might be helpful. Uh, same thing with year. So let's say you want to actually specify the weekday and you want to leave it narrow. And maybe you want the year here to be a two digit. You can set it up just like that. Uh, same thing with month, you can set it to just the day or the two digit or the long or short or narrow. Same thing with the day as well. You can say it has a leading zero if it needs it or just give it the number it has. Hour, minute, second, all that works the exact same and you can see how helpful and useful that is. Now one final one that might be interest of you to you would be this time zone right here. So let's get rid of all this junk. What I could do is if I want to specify the time zone, you can see here I'm actually spelling it out, the mountain standard time. That's where I'm at right now. Or you could shorten it just like that, mountain standard time, or do an offset, and you can see these down here as well. So those are all super, super helpful. Now one thing to note quickly is if you want to skip over placing this here, you can actually pass an undefined, and that will actually skip it and allow this to be customized to the person, but still allow you to add some options object as far as how you want it to be displayed. So in this case, let's say I wanted the date style to be full, but I just wanted it to be whatever their current locale is in. But I want to specify that this is what it's going to look like. Well, passing undefined will allow that to happen. And one thing to know is they say that if you're doing this to lots of dates, it's actually best or more performant to actually use the internationalization API itself. Now, one other thing as to how I'd actually use this, I would probably have something like a function. Maybe I'd make it an arrow function, and I'd call this like day of week, and then I would pass it a date and then I would just return dot to locale date string and here I would actually specify what I want here so maybe I'd have this undefined to start with and then I pass in an options object and I'd say weekday and I'd say long now what I could do is say console dot log day of the week and what I want to pass in here would be now now you can see that that gets me this back so if I'm writing a bunch of JavaScript, I can just quickly pass in dates that I need inside of a string. So perhaps I'm writing some JSX or just interpolating values directly inside of JavaScript, and I have some kind of string that I'm passing back. Maybe it's something like a paragraph tag, just like this. And inside here, I might say something like, today's day of the week is, and then I pass in here, day of the week, and I pass in now. now you can see here that what I get back is this string that passes me it's Monday. Let's see what day of the week New Year's is. So I could come in here and I'll just give it a uh, New Year's like that. And you can see how that's what it's gonna give me back. So usually I, I would have some kind of function and just pass in what I want for each of these. Now, for instance, let's say I wanted it to be like a fully typed out thing, or I'd have the weekday, then I'd have the year, and maybe I'd want this to be long as well. Well, now what you can see is that I can actually get all of this back. Oh, not long, I think this is numeric. That's one of the options, there we go, all right. so. 
2022 Saturday. All right, that's not very helpful to anybody, but you can see that that's exactly what I can pass in. See, this could be something like two digit as well and pass that in. And now I'm getting today's day of the week is 01 Saturday, just like that. I think the other option here again might be numeric. And you can see if I pull that over here, yeah, one Saturday, 20, 2022. Again, that's not super helpful the way that that's spaced out, but you can see how you can kind of specify exactly what you want and then just call the function when you want to pass a date to it. I hope that's helpful for you kind of getting your mind wrapped around it. This internationalization API is super helpful and it's nice that they've incorporated uh, a lot of its features inside of methods that live directly on date objects and string objects and a bunch of cool stuff in JavaScript. Well, if you like this video and it was a help to you, please leave a like and let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.